No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I have self proclaimed real Chirac Savage, <laughs> Tay 600 in the building. How you doing, man? Real, man. What's up, man? You know, I'm in the building. Shout out to my nigga Adam. Hey, man. Happy to have you in here. Uh, you first like popped into my head, like, oh, we should do an interview because I was doing the Polo G interview right. and he got videos with you and shit. And I think mm-hmm. that that was when you first reached out and were like, yo, I seen y'all talking about me, blah, blah, blah. So I'm glad we finally yeah. got to get it in. Yeah, my uh, one of the, like my people on my team, they had you know, cause everybody like when it be involved with me, like I don't say I I don't never be the first nigga to see like what's going on and what was said about me. So like the fans and all type of shit, like they was hitting me up cause the fans be on it more than anybody, you right. know. So they was hitting me up. They had seen the interview with you and Polo and shit, and then they was like, oh yeah, you know, Adam mentioned you and shit, and I'm like, oh damn, that was cool, that was love. And then my team, they was like, man, you might as well try to you know get that interview going, you know. So I'm like, all right, cool. And you know, I don't even know how, cause you know me, I didn't. I had one on your page or something. I really didn't even know how to get in contact with you, bro. Uh-huh. So I, I, my people, um, one of the people on my team, they had when it reached out and got that thing going. Now, yeah. So let's just jump start uh-huh. into that and just talk about that random topic. Uh, how did you meet Polo G and where that where that relationship come from? That y'all ended up doing music together. And also shout out to Bear Woods, cause we're smoking on some mm. some thick Bear Woods in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, can you give me a pack of woods in front too? So, uh, basically, how the shit with me and Polo had started was because my little brother Bali, he from his hood, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And he had always, you know, be playing his music, coming around and shit, playing folks' music and shit. And you know, when I when I seeing the shit, you know me, I'm always up to listening to new music because shit be getting old, you know what I'm saying? So you be needing new shit to play all the time, especially rappers, I feel like. We we probably listen to everybody but ourselves. you know what I'm saying? Right. So when he was playing folk shit, I'm like, damn, bro, who is this? He like, bro, this is one of the guys from the hood. He be going crazy. I'm like, yeah. So whole time, I'm listening, listening, listening to folk shit. Then I just, you know, I got to put folks on the page. Like, man, that nigga Polo G hard, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Whole time, not even knowing that this nigga knew my little sister's name and shit too, so. Oh, okay. He had, uh, I didn't even know little bro seen this shit or whatever. He had told my sister, he like, man, tell Tay that was what's up, bro. I seen him, shout me out, this, that, and the third. But I was just like, I always just spreading the love, though. You know, that's just how I am, bro. If I see some shit, I'm not gonna wait on everybody else to dick ride it or like get on the wave or nothing, bro. Like, I'm not gonna say like I started, bro, career. I'm not never right. saying that. I'm just saying like it, it with anything, period, in life, bro, I'm not gonna do it because. Everybody else is doing it, you know. I'm gonna be the one that be like, you know what, man, that that was, and I I don't care being the first nigga to say it. Like I don't care about being the first nigga to say it, cause you know people like to go along mm. with what's popular, and me I be the nigga that starts something, and make it popular, you know. I respect that a lot because I feel like uh, as as I get more and more in the game, like yo, I remember when I first was was working with X mm-hmm. back when he was first coming up, and I would be getting hit by like hella managers and shit when he was first popping off and like you know artist managers and shit would be hitting me up Mm -hmm. and then I realized like oh they don't want to just they don't want to do a song with them they'll Mm -hmm. do a song with them if they can sign him Mm -hmm. if they can you know get something out of it and then once they're invested in it then they'll start promoting it and stuff but you Mm -hmm. could because people don't realize that a lot of the top rappers are actually like really good A&Rs they actually really know what's going on in the game they know Mm -hmm. how to spot talent because they're in they have their own label they can sign people that's part of the business that they're in Mm -hmm. so it's like cool to see that you were just showing love because let's be real Polo G probably show love to you he'll he'll never forget about that like somebody could show him love now and it's like okay obviously he's right. popping it's easy to show somebody love at that point but somebody who showed him love early on it's like he'll probably always remember that and appreciate that yeah you know? that's that's kind of like why our relationship is really built out because it's like you know when you when you at like a level where he is now mm. Or what well, even on a, when you get a level to a level period when you start seeing a lot of people flock to your to what you got going on because it's moving you know mm. you would never really be able to tell who really genuinely fucking with you because of mm. you or what you can really do so it's like our relationship is always really built off generosity like everything me and him do like we do shit for each other behind closed doors like people call me to set up a lot of money plays involving polo and I always I call him like nigga woo woo mm. motherfuckers are talking about twenty. 20,000, bro, bro, this, that, and the third. You know, I called folks on some shit like that, and he had called me like, you know, this, that, man, motherfucker trying to keep you in tune with this, and, you know, some shit bumping in the uh, world style and all type of shit, you know? So it's like, we just do shit off the muscle with each other. Like, we don't hesitate. Our minds just work the same. Like, you know, 
And that's what it really is, cause we know we know, and he know for a show, cause it's like he the biggest nigga in the, in the, the young nigga in the game right now. I mean, Chicago's going crazy. There's definitely a, a fuckload of talent. Like if mm-hmm. if people thought that the wave was going to slow down after like 2011 or whatever on some street shit, like when yeah. Keith came up and Fredo came out and all this shit was starting to pop off, yeah. it's like that has not happened at all. If anything, like Juice World, one of the biggest rappers from last year from Chicago, yeah, for sure. even a lot of the dudes who are still like like I mean, obviously. Uh, Dirk all of a sudden is in this situation and yeah. shit, but you still see Herbo getting crazy love and shit. You mm-hmm. still, a lot of the people it's like the Chicago thing wasn't a flash in the pan. It's, it's really like a, a new music hub in the in the country over the past however many years. Yeah, we kind of bodyguarded our way in, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we always kind of floated through the scenery with niggas like Twista and mm-hmm. Kanye and them and, you know, but we never really got a chance to really like have an ever where Chicago kind of took over the game. Right. Or we really changed something as far as like a, 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 a like a domino effect. Like, you know, when Kanye and them came in the game, Kanye changed the game, but it was like, Kanye didn't have like a clan of niggas behind him that was from the city too that was ready to change the game with him. You know, right. like when Sosa came in, and that's why he gonna be the goat forever because it's like Sosa did something that nobody else could do. Kanye, Twister, uh, the brat, whoever came from the city before him, like when they got on, they didn't make it to where okay now when I'm on and I'm rich and famous, my city is on. Like mm. when Sosa got rich, it was like all right, Chicago on, we on. I got us on, like. Now who? Now let's get this next nigga on. Do you right. see niggas like? I mean, her. I mean, you could say Dirk and them was already in the game. They had Sam before Sosa. They just didn't have an impact to the game he had. Right. But Dirk Reese and Sosa did. Fredo, all of them. Then you had Herb and Bibby them. Then you had our generation with our cut that was like L.A. Capone them and you know Pappy them. It was a lot of young niggas taking over the game then. So it's like. When you, the Chicago is just like, now it's like, we we one of them states, where, um, we like solidified now. Like mm-hmm. when you when you see a Chicago artist trying to get in it, you got to respect it because it's not, it's not far-fetched no more. You know what I'm saying? It's something that can actually happen. Were you already in the streets by the time that Sosa started popping off and everything? Were you already, or were you still like so young that you were like a kid almost? Bro, I was both because uh-huh. like you would think like a young a nigga my age at the time supposed to have been a kid. Right. But that wasn't our lifestyle, not even for Sosa. You know, like we was younger said, like I was a kid's age, 14, 13, 12. By, by the time I was 14, I already caught a pistol case. But you already knew too much at that uh, yeah, point. Yeah, I was already a gangster. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Sosa was too. We was already doing extracurricular ass shit, you know? Uh-huh. So it's like, that's why I get a lot of respect too in my city because it's like, so much shit been going on for so long, you know. But in my city, after eighteen, you really like a big homie in your hood, cause mm, it's like if you made it that far. Yeah, if you made it that far, bro, you done been through so much shit in the last six, seven years of your life, man. That if you still standing out here free and ain't do no fool shit, you a you a legend. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that. That's the just the, the type of city I live in, fool. Like uh-huh. you gonna grow up quick, cause at at a certain age, it's gonna be like, man, look. Not all that little funny little all uh, your hoop dreams, all that shit over with, man. <laughs> if you still if you still want like I'm saying it ain't over with, but it's like, bro, you like I got homies that real life had hoop dreams, but they were still affiliated with the streets. Mm. And that shit didn't fly. Like, it's like you really gotta go one way or another with this shit because like I know niggas, you know, Polo even got homies that was hooping and shit, like that 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 died to this shit or tried to make it out this shit. Every street nigga do, you know, so it's like when you a young nigga, man, I remember being 11 years old. This is probably like my last little innocent years or days. You know what I'm saying? Like, by the time my daddy went to the feds, by the time I was 13 years old, man, like 2008, 2009, man, I was already BD. You know what I'm saying? Already just gang banging in the streets, l- learning about guns and drugs and all type of shit, you know? So it's like I, I really was never a kid. When it came to you becoming a BD or whatever, though, was it the, was it chosen for you, or was it the kind of thing where at a certain point you had to make a decision to be like, all right, this is what I'm trying to roll with? Just like that, the same thing. It's like it's chosen for you, but you, I mean, you this is what you whatever you want to do in life, you know what I'm saying? But it's like it's chosen for you, like y'all said, like you are who you hang with and where you hang. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to claim nothing that's not where you at. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't want to associate yourself nothing that's like where I'm from. I've been over there since I was about four five years old. You right. know what I'm saying? Like. So I'm familiar with everything right there. 
that's where I come up at. That's where I grew up at. Everybody know me. So whatever is right there, that's what I'm a bang. That's what I'm a claim. And you know, when it come time for you to be old enough to understand the streets and get involved in the streets, then that's what you gon' that's the only right shit to claim. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What was your uh, parents like? Were they were they like actively trying to keep you out of that shit, or was it kind of something that they accepted? Every good parent try to keep you out of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like because especially if you like got parents like man, like I got street parents, not like uh-huh. no parents that's not like. But they want it better for you. Yeah, they want better for me, of course. Hell yeah, but my parents like street as hell, so it's like they know what's to come from it. So they like. Overly trying to keep me out the way, but then my daddy went to the feds. He did ten years, mm. you know what I'm saying, and he went like right at the verge where he really I needed him most for some shit like that. You know what mm. I'm saying? Because he was out the whole time while I was an innocent ass kid. You know what I'm saying? And he was buying me playstations and bikes and all that type of shit. But that was this type of I was a kid, kid. You know right. what I'm saying? But when when you started to get to yeah, that when age I, when where you I could got really to get that trouble. age where it was like I was finna start learning about bitches and money and. Guns and like bad shit. He was he was caught up in some shit and that his word was only getting him so far. You know what I'm saying? So it was like they wanted me out the streets, but it's like they couldn't duck it. Uh-huh. Then it's like they was living. I was living where I was familiar. So it was like even when you think I'm going out the door, I'm hanging with my guys, and we so young that we innocent. We really getting into all type of street shit. Like me, D Rose, all of us, man. We was young as hell. Like. Man, overly young, just doing all type of shit, man. And my our mamas didn't even know about the shit. Right. So it's like it's just it's just like they try to keep you out the streets, but it's really like after after you get in it, like after okay, look, I'm gonna tell you like this, right? I was 14 years old, I think, when I caught my first pipe case. Still there. You know what I'm saying? So 14. How the fuck did that happen? Yeah, because I'm telling you, you know, you be in the streets, you young as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like young as hell. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. By that time, you know, you really in the streets. I know ops that got killed that was them niggas, and they was 14. And you would look at them like, man, them niggas was kids. But no, them niggas was them niggas. You know what mm. I'm saying? So, like, like, it sounds like a little kid got killed, but in reality, those yeah, those 14-year-olds yeah, like, were wrapped up in so much shit yes, that bro. the people who were really paying attention weren't that surprised yeah, that they got That's exactly how it is. You be like, the people on the outside, like, oh, they just, they killing babies. But the ones in the streets that know, they, man, shorty want no baby. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I call my first pipe case, I'm 14 years old. So it's like, nah, before this, I had been trying to hide everything from my mama, like in this totality, like mm. me getting high and me actually like gang bang. Like if I felt like my mama was going to drive through the hood and, and see me posted up, I went, I was ducking, like watching this cars that was coming, all type of shit, you know? But after I caught, got bumped with that first pipe case, I got out, it was like, shit, I was letting it hang out. Now, like, not to a disrespectful standpoint, but just like... <laughs> Okay, the cats out of the bag. I did not only got caught like I ain't just get caught high. Some I got caught with a gun. Mm. You know what I'm doing now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So now when I get out of jail, I'm I'm getting high in my room now. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you I'm, were smoking in your room and your mom couldn't say shit all of a sudden. She 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 just like it was just like she she been knew I was probably getting high. I'm thinking that I'm hiding it from her, but my mama like I said she smart already, but. So she probably not. It's just like I got kind of a little more open with everything. It was like I couldn't hide nothing. Now, like, my, I got bumped with a gun, bro. <laughs> Ain't no point of me lying about getting high, and I'm playing with pistols. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's just how it was. I had to let it all hang out after that. And I mean, you were, but, but you were already wrapped up in the shit, and then Sosa comes out, and then all of a sudden it becomes like a, a nationwide thing, worldwide thing, where everybody thinks of Chicago as the home of the crazy ass teenage kids with guns and dreadlocks <laughs> and every fucking wild ass thing you can imagine. Right. What What was that like seeing that all of a sudden become like the shit you were already doing became what Chicago is famous for mm-hmm. and became like the musical from a musical perspective. Everything's blowing up out of there. What was your perspective on that? Man, that shit was wild as hell because it was like, it was kind of like it was true though. Because like, like, man, I'm telling you, like, mind you, bro, I come from around <laughs> Sosa, been around in my whole life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what I'm, what y'all actually looking at, it's like y'all throwing some extra on it. But it's like, we, that's kind of like when you sum it up, we was, we was some young wild niggas. Like, niggas got to remember, man, Sosa was already, sign, he was signing deals. I think he was like 16, 17. You know what I'm saying? Like. I remember us being in this crib on, on Michigan just getting high as hell in that bitch, folk, like, just watching the process of this shit happening, folk. Folks on house arrest, folk on video, it's just like, we and that bitch just cool and getting high, me and 22 and them just 
watching this shit like damn this shit unfolding fold like mm-hmm. you know like this is our hood this one like no nigga i was just like or no 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 hood that i was just like around like as an outsider like this my area like this is my homies nigga we in Bessie Rose together, like these niggas that I'm seeing every day, and this shit unfolding right in front of me, fo. So I'm like watching this shit, and I'm like, damn, fo, they, everybody is tuning in to this shit. Like, I couldn't believe it, fo. Like, damn, Sosa just made this shit overly big, fo. Yeah. Like, he just made this shit overly big, fo. And it was just like, I couldn't believe it because <laughs> I know when he got in this shit, it was like, all right, okay. They let one of the real niggas in, like, all right, cool. I know folks' background. I know where he come from. I know he ain't lying in his raps. That's why we used to always listen to Sosa, because we know he come from the streets. Mm. So we know it ain't no nigga in this bitch telling us no lies or rapping about no lies, because he out here with us, and he just going in the stool rapping that shit, you know? Right. So we knowing what it is, folks. So we just gravitating towards folks close up as much as we should, because we knowing, like, bro, oh, talking that shit. Right. Yeah, this, that shit. Like, you know? So it was just like when when, it, when everybody started tuning in, I'm like, damn, fool. They really like, we didn't got on from just being ourselves type shit. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of niggas come in the game and got to change who they is. Or- the ultimate goal is to to be yourself and make it. So mm-hmm. like when, when Sosa did that, I can't even imagine the effect that it must have had on your brain as yeah, a young hell kid. Yeah, because it's like, bro, you know, like. With us coming up doing what we do, bro, everybody around you that's like in a position like principals or, you know, people that got money the legal way, mm. they always try to belittle what you doing at a moment. Oh, this ain't this type of activity not going to get you this. Mm. This type of attitude, you're not going to live to this because you do this, you know? Mm-hmm. So seeing Sosa get on was like, bitch, you lied. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's one thing to be a bad kid. It's another thing when the baddest kid in town is now a rich, famous millionaire and Kanye's remixing his song, jacking his song, I'm and all about, his friends are popping now too. Bro, I'm talking about it had like the biggest effect for everybody around him too. Like, bro, no. You lied to us. All the teachers and <laughs> the principals, the coaches, y'all ass was lying. And if y'all would have told us, we could have been got him and getting rich and famous and smoking pounds and drinking, got him at lean and six hundred dollars a bottle and shit, just being ourselves and rapping. We would have been doing this shit. You see, Them when he came out, prices. we like, damn, everybody rapping now. Six hundred a pint. Yeah, that's old school. Yeah, that shit old school. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying, like bro. I ain't not saying we not knocking the way that they did it, but like we never told them like. Because Sosa got more money than every nigga that told him he wasn't going to have no money. Mm. He got like millions, m- millions more. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, not only did y'all lie to us, but y'all made it seem like this was something that was impossible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like he got on and it's like he he was helping niggas get on that he had no, no, no like direct correlation with. Like, bro, it's niggas that's getting on for being his ops. You know what I'm mm. saying? And they getting on rapping because motherfuckers know they was in tour with Chief Keith. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... You really like we me when that shit got to unfold and I was just like I was overly tweaked out by that shit cause it's like we didn't like as far as us, we did no niggas like this, bro. Mm-hmm. Like even when Dirk and Reese and them got on, it was like, you know, cause they got on like in the summer of that year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when they got on, it was like it I can't say it was a big, overly big difference from before they signed. Like, you know, they signed, Reese grabbed a truck, you know what I'm saying? The straight eight. And from your perspective, you can't even imagine that this could ever slow down or whatever. You're thinking that, like, this is how it's just going to keep happening. Yeah, like, yeah. everybody from this city bro. is blowing up like this. It must have been a crazy-ass feeling. Yeah, bro, it was crazy. And like I said, it was like, when he did it, it was just overly glorified because it was like, bro, like I say, when Dirk and Reese signed, right, they shit was like, damn, they signed. But when Sosa signed, it was like, he coming through that bitch rich, like, uh-huh. Shit no motherfuckers, fo. And it was like, damn, fo, folks did it. Like, I remember the first time he being in this crib, I'm looking at him like, he, like, I come in the crib with cop on them and he not there. Then he come in and I'm looking at him. He got on the new mic that ain't come out to like six months later. <laughs> he got on all the new drip that nobody even knows about or can afford. He got a QP in his hand. He got a drunk bottle of drink in his hand. He got the 60, this is when we smoking switches. He got the box of 60 switches in his hand. Yep. And he just gloried up, chains on. I'm dead. I did that crap. So photo up there, I'm looking at this shit, bro. We just got to chopping it up, but it's like that shit. It's like you never know coming from what we came from. Like every nigga in the streets gonna tell you that they came and overcame a lot of shit, and that's true, probably, folks. But like Chicago niggas, like we was raised different. It's like people ask me all the time, is it really like that? How we be seeing? And I tell them like, bro, 
They telling y'all the shit just that they know. Like, mm-hmm. Imagine all the shit that, that that goes on that these reporters from out of town and all that shit don't never know. Like it's worse than what y'all know. Yeah, the vast majority yeah, of the, all the fucked yeah, up shit going yeah, on doesn't man, make it into the newspaper. What we know, like what y'all know on the outside, is worse than that. So just imagine like us living through this shit as young kids. We don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. We real lives still at at the age we sh- at, we was. We still still been innocent. Right. You know what I'm saying? We just trying to accustom ourselves to all this. Grown ass shit that we doing, bro, and it's like it was changing us. You know what I'm saying? Was L.A. Capone like your close homie who then just started blowing up in the rap shit? Was he like the one from your squad that first started to get attention? Um. Okay. Look, this is what I can say, right? It was E Day first. Okay. E Day first. came first, right? Then Rondo came after him. Okay. L.A. came. He kind of had like the biggest effect of all of them. Okay. Because it was like, okay, he was. He was like some new, but he was also better than them. Like mm-hmm. you know, just being honest, like anybody that knows everybody's body of work would would agree uh-huh. that he was just better, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when he came on the scene. Now, mind you, this my, this is my right hand man. Like okay, so so I grew up with folks, but like this is my right hand man. Like we every day out here in this shit. This is you see me, you see him. So mm-hmm. now it's like when he doing his thing, I'm like, what the fuck, folks? And it's like it's all over again though like mm-hmm. with with the situation with Sosa it's just like he never got to the point to sign but like me seeing the recognition and the people in the city like how they gravitate towards him we standing in the hood on King Drive and the motherfucker ride play past pan his shit and he like fo that's my shit fo like I was remember right there when the when we was standing in the hood right. on King Drive and the motherfucker rolled past playing his shit he like fo that's my shit fo <laughs> they playing my shit fo I'm like damn fo <laughs> Motherfucker don't even know this is who they riding past. Right, they were yeah. off to something like, but whole time they just casually riding and they didn't roll past the motherfucker who shit was here. It was epic, fool. That's bananas. Epic, fool. That's so crazy. Hey, did it always occur to you how wild it was that there were so many people online talking about Chicago and like little ass kids from the suburbs and people from all over the world who were just obsessed with not just Chicago, like politics, the shit that was mm-hmm. going on in your neighborhoods and everything, but in particular, like the worst parts of it like they were really drawn to the murders and the the arrests and all the crazy ass shit like did you ever sit back and realize like that there's a whole like a whole business basically because there's hundreds of thousands of people that will watch anything related to any kind of violence in that environment yeah like and that in itself that shit is kind of spooky bro Mm. it's spooky as hell because like situations that be going on right and it be so fucked up because it be like a lot of shit that we be looking at g I be having to tell a lot of our fans, like, bro, I know, like, a lot of this shit that y'all watch, it might be funny to y'all and cool and whatever y'all kind of take from this shit is cool, but it's like, bro, y'all got to remember, like, the shit that y'all listening to and reading about, this is the shit that we living through on a daily basis, so while y'all getting laughs out of this shit mm. and thinking, like, oh, damn, like, ops, will, like, the fans was real live, sit wherever they were at, watch videos of us to see who we in tour with. Watch videos of who we in tour with to see what they's being said about us. Like the fans keep us in tour with them more than they know because the fans is the ones that go on Duck Live and be like, <laughs> "Oh, he said this about Werber," and then come DM it to one of Clip us. Clip the part yeah. of it, yeah. put it up with a caption that you tag you in it, like yeah. all this shit that you would yeah. never see you otherwise. You would never yeah. even would have saw it. It'd be like they a catch it or they a screen record it. Then you go type in your name on on YouTube, and now you see the whole live right there, and you like what? He said, what about folk? Mm-hmm. Man, we on that ass, you know? And you would be like, they be like, damn, woo, they think it's funny. But whole time, when a motherfucker get killed because of some shit that y'all was instigating or just going back and forth, keeping up, it be in a motherfucker get 50 years with a motherfucker get milk. Y'all like, ah, oh, man, y'all niggas got to chill. Yeah, nobody's going to remember the kid in Poland who yeah, clipped that yeah. part of the live <laughs> and put it up and, and made a big deal about right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> and that's, that's the whole thing, what I be saying, bro. It's like nobody's going to remember <laughs> that you even did this the whole time. You got a nigga with milk. Right. So what, what was the year um, when you guys all caught that case together with the issue with the taxi driver or whatever? How many that years? Was, that was 2014. 2014. 2014, man. And, and and that just happened in Chicago. And yeah, it happened in Chicago. Some wild shit that they were saying that happened, and get snatched nine of them up for the shit, put them book, got booked yeah. them. I mean, yeah. but it's just insane that you're still dealing with the ramifications of that shit five years later. Like, still, like this week, there's like articles coming out that are basically saying like, oh, actually, Tay Six Hundred didn't snitch. The yeah. paperwork doesn't indicate that. Yeah, you're still dealing with that to this day, and that shit was five years ago. Yeah, that's why I try to tell a lot of people like, you know, 
it's been the the shit that I've exposed that you speaking on now, it's like recently getting exposed within like the last ten days, right? Yeah. And it's like, um, basically, from what I've been on, it's just like people real live been telling me like, man, you should just be humble because you know I've been exposing and I've been talking my little shit, you know? And people telling me like, bro, all right, you proved yourself, you know you that niggas know that you didn't this and you didn't say that. So, you know, you should stop just speaking on it and just be humble about it. And me, I understand that, right? But what I also want everybody that says that to understand is this. I could have been killed because of that shit. You know right. what I'm saying? I like, I real lie, bro. This is not nothing that I just had to face like out here in the world. Like I was in jail for 10 months. Mm. I could have been shanked in jail. Did you, could, you felt that energy yeah, when you were locked man, up? Man, when I was in jail, bro, that? because you got to remember, I'm Tay 600, right? right? The hood loved me. Everybody in the city loved me, but they loved them too. Them not just no niggas you could just tell on and be niggas going to still fuck with you or none of that. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like, they love them too. On mm -hmm. top of you snitching, bro. Like, that snitching shit, that's not flying, bro. I don't give no fuck who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's like, with me, when I'm in jail, bro, it was like... I'm glad I'm the nigga I am because I've never been the type of nigga to duck confrontation or just like be scared. Like nothing scares me. Like that's how the streets fucked me up. You know what I'm saying? Like seeing so much shit at a young age and uh, and going through so much. Like even with this shit, it's like when I got in jail, I had already been dealing with this shit for two years at that time. So it was like my head was to the point where it was like nothing could scare me. Nothing could make me cry or nothing, bro. Whatever I face, if it got to go bad, it's going to go bad. Hey, how did how'd you feel in that moment where you didn't really have a way to prove your innocence at that time? You basically just had to like, you could say your shit on Instagram and mm -hmm. Twitter or whatever, but you didn't really have like, like now it's like more of the facts are out there. Mm -hmm. It's easier for you to make the case and say mm -hmm. like, look, I didn't tell. You can look at the paperwork. You don't mm -hmm. have any fucking proof. It seems easier now, mm -hmm. but at the time it must've felt like you were just drowning in it you Bro, couldn't really do anything to I protect tell yourself. so many people now like that's what's kind of it kind of fucked me up a little bit because i was already fucked up before this from the streets but it's like this this situation going let going on with it for five years bro like it made me so defensive and angry like my anger like it's easy it's easy to make me mad or for me to get defensive because like people don't know even for the five years like i remember like for the last three years i could say like when i came home from the gun case and shit it was easier because I mean, it, it got a little easier because, like, okay, I didn't take the stand. They knew that. They knew they, that if you if you snitch on somebody, you got the right to face your accuser. You know, I came home basically explaining a lot of laws of why it couldn't go how it went. But I still never had the paperwork. So it was like I had more people on my end, but it still wasn't what I needed. So it's like for the last five years, I've been waking up every day, getting on Instagram. I got to block 50 people a day because they in my comments calling me a rat and niggas in my DM. Oh, you told on your homies and, like... Like I told people, bro, it's 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 one thing for a nigga like, say for instance, like my my homie right here, my peoples, right, my manager right now, he can probably face some shit like this and move. I'm in Chicago, he can just move to Iowa and live a whole nother life. Right. Nobody will never see him and be like, oh, that's what well, you told him. Da, da 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 da. Like you don't even gotta go nowhere far. You can go somewhere deep in Illinois, like Schaumburg, and live a new life. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But me, I can't go to London. I can't even go to London without somebody. Like that's how. I, like, people probably won't understand it. They probably think that I'm hyping myself up or something. Right. But that's how real life big the Chicago rappers are, regardless of people know it or not. Like, I got fans from all over this earth. Right. Like, a lot of them. Like, to the point where people request me to come out of the out of the country a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, I wouldn't be able to go somewhere without somebody being able to be like, bro, that's that nigga that told him woo-woo. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'd be shamed. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, imagine... Facing that and having nowhere to run. Like, you just got to face it. Not be even because you want to, because you're strong, but because it's nowhere for you to run from it to. Did you tell me this? Do you have moments where you were sitting in jail, no lawyer, and they're and you're being interrogated and they're trying to get you to snitch? Bro, it's been you were plenty in those of times like that. Like, bro, my name, from my hood and from my area, my name been lit, like, as far as, like, the police. Like, they know what I'm tied into. They know who I am, and they ha think they have a clue of what, what I do in the streets. So it's like, when shit comes up, I'm one of them first niggas they want to chase down on a block or pull up on or give a fucking hassle to because they know. If it got something to do with any nigga from the 600 and he official, then take on, he was probably there or he knew about it or he did it. Hmm. That's how it was for me. So it's like, it's like I've been through this shit. That's what I tell niggas, like, bro. 
Before I ever got in the streets, bro, my daddy went to the feds, nigga, and got 10 years, bro. Mm -hmm. my, I watched my daddy, homies, in his paperwork, nigga. My mama had it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, bro, snitching is, and it's not one of the reasons why I don't snitch, but it's just a fact. It's like, bro, whatever you tell, if you really tell, it's going to come out. Like, it's no way you can duck it, hide from it. Ain't no secret snitch. There's no way you're going to be named as John Doe or nothing. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to tell. And then if you snitch, if they go to trial, you're going to have to tell in front of a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing that you can duck in no way without anybody knowing. But how, ba how bad was, like, the interrogations that you've had to deal with? Like, was it, like, hours of them bro, coming days, down on you and bro, type imagine shit? Imagine being 14, 15 years old, bro. You still a young nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Like, bro, you a street nigga, bro, when shit, but when shit hits the fan, you still calling your mama, bro. You're 14. You're you 14 years old, bro. Yeah. I'm still a little ass baby, bro. Like, my mama still coming to get me out of the station, bro. And you got a position and, of authority. You got a police officer telling you shit, and they can say whatever the fuck they want. Right, exactly. Imagine that being scary, and then they tell me out shit. You going from waking up freely and have, not having to pay bills or worry about nothing to motherfuckers telling you you facing 50 years in jail. You not even 20 years old. Mm -hmm. You ain't even 15 You ain't even old enough To smoke or buy tobacco mm -hmm. But they talking about 50 years So imagine mm -hmm. that shit Being scary on, on top of all the dirty shit Motherfuckers that do Dirty cops They wanna smack you And they wanna deprive you Of meals And they wanna like Deprive you of really Anything Shower Anything You just there Sit you in that bitch For three days And won't give you nothing mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying You in that bitch Smelling like onions And fish And just ain't eight and all type of shit that they can do for this amount of time. You know what I'm saying? So it's very scary, bro. Right. Why do you think that uh, Rondo is talking down on you and saying, like, now saying things that, like, we can't prove or that seem like they just are, like, provably not true? Like, what, what do you think is going on in his head at this point? Man, I feel like because what I exposed, it kind of came out and made him look. Like he was saying some shit, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like the paperwork that I that I exposed, this like the appeal paperwork and shit, and basically like anything that was mentioned is gonna be mentioned in there. You know what I'm saying? Anything that got anybody convicted or of any type of crime or anything was gonna be mentioned, and my name wasn't. You know what I'm saying? But what it did mention was it said some shit in there, basically looking like he was trying to put it on C day, and he thought that I was. He thought like, well, not him, but him and his attorney was trying to put make up a theory that that C Day was the sole shooter and he was wasn't accountable for shit. Uh -huh. And he thinking that I'm exposing that, but really I'm telling everybody like, bro, I don't even give a fuck about who telling anything. I just know that I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And when me exposing my own innocence is exposed that. So he was thinking like I'm trying to make motherfuckers make him look like he doing something, but I'm telling him like, bro, I'm not. I don't give a fuck. Who doing what? Mm. I just know motherfuckers better stop saying that. I'm doing it. Right. So, you know, niggas get defensive and shit like that. But then a motherfucker made a post today to my don't bash him. And uh, this was my brother at one point in time. And, you know, uh, he helped the case. And he uh, he 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 made everybody makes mistakes. But at least you tried to write your mistake. And he said something like he had somebody type that up with, with a picture of me, him, and c -Day. But I didn't buy it. I wasn't fucking with it because at the end of the day, it sounded like you apologizing and you acting like you the bigger person speaking on how he the bigger person and this, that, and the third. But mm. you also still insinuated that I snitched on you or made some type of mistake in some type of way, shape, form, or fashion. Right. So I'm not copping to that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not copping to you. Yeah, yeah, you made a mistake, bro. No. Stop playing with me. You know what I'm mm. saying? So at the end of the day, bro, you know... I, like I say, I don't get no fuck. But it's just like for the people that really be in my inboxes to my, okay, bro, you won. Stop speaking on it, bro. Just imagine like this shit been going on five years. Mm. I could have been killed. I could have been killed in jail. Like in jail, dealing with it for almost a year every day. You now that's more traumatizing than anything, bro. Because jail was gonna force you to be around niggas regardless. Like there's no way that you can sit in a cell for ten months. They gonna force you unless you in seg or something, but you still gotta be in there with a nigga who might think I'm snitching. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I'm in the jail. I'm going to different decks. I gotta go to court with a thousand niggas every thirty days. I'm moving on my deck. It's forty of us on the deck. You know what I'm saying? I'm, every time I move and go to the hospital, I'm over there with niggas and everybody in the county know me. I can't never go off. I, when I leave out of my cell, I'm known. Mm -hmm. When I come on the deck, niggas don't ask me who I am because they know who I am. Right? They don't ask me where you from. Oh. I don't even get that no more when I go in jail. Like when I come in that bitch, they see me, and if it's an op, it's a fight. If it's the if it's the gang, it's the, what's, it's the gang. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't even get asked who am I no more. You know what I'm saying? So it's like imagine being this nigga in jail. I had fights over this. You know what I'm saying? Got my dreads pulled out, jumped all type of shit in jail because just like I'm one of them niggas, or I gotta get into it with a motherfucker that think they was like 
Did you cut the dreads in jail? I cut them in jail. Oh. I cut them in the county. And that was one of the reasons because I was fighting too much. <laughs> like, bro, in the county, long dreads. That's it's, a liability. It's out. Yeah, that should have fucked you up. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to cut that shit. I had, when I knew I was going to take my time and shit, I had been in the county like six months almost at the time. I was going to take my time. I came to court, hair cut. Mm. And they still gave me 30 months. Damn. <laughs> Do you, when you were, is your outlook on life, like, it must be pretty crazy because, like, some of your closest friends are now in jail till they're old senior yeah. citizens and shit yeah. and then you're still out here free and still walking the streets and actually have like the ability the freedom do you think about that shit every day yeah i do like, especially given also how many of your friends have passed away as well yeah bro like and that's the reason why i say like you really got a real live respect the niggas that's still out here standing like you gotta because bro it's like like i say man i remember being in the streets doing the shit we was doing, right? Doing all this game banging, and then you look up four of your homies that you be with every day then got arrested for murder. Mm. Murder. Like, I remember being cool and game banging, and I looked up. Rondo was in jail for a body in March. See, they went to jail for a body a week later in March. D Rose went to for a body in April. Vaughn went for a body in June. Mm. These niggas who, these the niggas I'm running with every day. We can't get high without each other. We can't sue dice without each other. We can't gang bang if one of us or all of us ain't right here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking like, damn, on top of L.A., he get, L.A. dead now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lil Boo them dead now. D-Thang them dead now. Baldy them dead now. 40 them dead now. Like, it's just like so many niggas that I remember like, man, my mama. Coming to grab, picking me up from the station, she picking them up because they look at her as mama. My mama sheltered all these young niggas, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? My sister's brother, all these niggas, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. when I see, when people be thinking, like, bro, it's like the last man standing. That's right. why I don't yeah. feel bad about, like, like I feel like street niggas, our, our, our goal and our main objective is to get out, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be trying to... I like I will never like people that's from the outside looking in even know that I'm really from where I'm from. What I live is what I what I what niggas rapped about is what I was. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't gotta revisit the hood to prove that I'm some that I was in the past. Like ah, that shit. Not, well, none of I do not gonna make me no less of who I am. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? My street credit and my faith card solidified. What I done in the streets cannot be forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel almost kind of lonely just because so many other people that you grew up around that are your peers are gone like they just yeah, don't yeah. have that many close friends because yeah, so yeah. many of them are you know gone and then it's like it's more fucked up for me because my situation made me not really even reach Trust out to have well, a lot yeah. of new friends or mm-hmm. even try to replace friends at all like if my friends weren't killed or gone for for, for murder or whatever they switched up mm. so it's like i couldn't even I didn't even, like, I, I really be with right now is family. Like, don't get me wrong. I got a lot of niggas from my hood that I still talk to every day and I demo with. We link out and we link up and we ball out and do all that shit, kick it at clubs and all that shit. But, like, I'm not, you ain't going to pull me back into my old self. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the type of shit that gets niggas, like, dirt in them situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that trying to do what you used to do or people trying to drag you up into old habits. That shit, that shit affect, fuck up what you got going on now. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'd rather go to jail and get 50 years back when I was 16 and I wasn't Tay 600 and I wasn't rapping and getting millions of views and getting feature money and all that shit. Because then I'm just a little ass boy. I ain't had no kids, no responsibilities, no nothing. So if I get 50 years, it ain't like I left shit out here. Mm. I didn't really leave my mark on nothing. Right. But if I get 40 years right now, even at the stage that I'm at, a lot of shit going to change. A lot of people going to go live, start back living basic. A lot of... Like, a lot of shit going to change. And, and I'm going to be in jail even more fucked up about that because I know a lot of shit You're is going to... Yeah, yeah. All right. 99% of people in jail ain't seen shit. Yeah. You know? And it's like, they, that's easier for them to do their time. But when you got, like, kids and responsibilities, like, like even you, man, like, I know right now what you do, bro, It's a, if, if anything happened to you where you had to really, like, be in jail or be away... So much shit have changed. So many people wouldn't be able to pay for certain many certain things, yeah. and you wouldn't like a lot of people's whole lifestyle to change. Like all this yep. expensive shit, motherfuckers got going on, or could afford it'll stop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And me knowing that a motherfucker can't even make. Oh man, you change. Oh, you don't do. Oh, you act like you don't. Bro, when, this, when I was young, it was nothing to break the law because what the fuck am I? What do I have? I've I've got nothing. You, you know, got nothing. Yeah, 
Right. So it's like, like when we young, like that's what people don't understand. Like, bro, when you get older, that's why I never hated on the niggas that got older and did different shit because this shit is not what the fuck we supposed to do our whole life, bro. We've been in this shit since literally teens, children. Mm. Motherfuckers adults now, bro. You from childhood to adulthood is like ten years, bro. Yeah. Why the fuck you want me to spend all these fucking years over here, bro? Like, I, what, bro? What, what? Man, look, I done been in every damn state, damn that in this country, bro. I will never sit on King Drive ever again. Mm. I will never sit on Calumet and just rather be there rather than anywhere else. Never again. Right. It ain't never brought me shit. Nothing. Not a dime. I done went to jail for that block. I done went and been in, they done got at me, tried to make me a rat. God damn it, I done lost homies. I done lost, man, cousins, all type of shit, bro. Like, mm. it's just that's, that, the hood never bring you nothing, for real. Like, some, it maybe hustlers kind of live, they get a little bit more from it or something, but like, even then, still, you don't live long with that. Kind of on that topic, were you shocked when you heard this shit about Dirk? I mean, yeah, because because he's doing pretty good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's just like, I think I might have done his last interview before he got picked up for that shit have, out at Raw Live. That's sure. crazy. Yeah, and it's like you know, being what happened between me and him. A lot of people run up on me thinking that I like this shit. Like you know, me and him got into it originally about me fucking his BM, mm. and that's what the fuck the whole thing really came from with me and him. And it's like. Me going through the being in the streets and being in the system, look, man, I never wish that shit on nobody. And before I speak anything on anything other part of it, that's just like what I want to say. Like, I don't, I don't, I'd rather any nigga be close to his children. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember being in jail for 10 months, you know what I'm saying? Almost a year. I didn't have a son. I didn't have nothing to grieve. Mm. Then when I got locked up last year for a pipe case that I beat, I sat, I was in there for seven days. And it was the longest seven days of my life. Mm. And I, because it was my son. My son was five weeks old when I went to jail. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I was like, just like overly bonding with my son. Like, this is my only son, my only child, bro. And then when it's like, it, it fucked me up to the point where I got out of jail a week later, bro. And I, it was like, he had grew like three pounds. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? This is not my baby. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like, so it's like, bro, and he got like seven kids, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On top of, like I say, bro, you got a lot of people that depend on you out here and in them gyms. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when I see shit like this, I get angry because I know a lot of people, bro. Like, when I get to his level, I'm not jeopardizing my situation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm not one, I'm not going to speak like I know his, like whatever he accused of, He, I, I'm, I believe he ain't do it. That's how I'm coming. But right. I, and we going to speak in a hypothetical standpoint. We always want to hope for the best Yeah, we're going to speak in a hypothetical standpoint. Like, bro, I'm not risking my situation. And then you got niggas around you that just came from these situations. Like Von, them, he just did three and a half years and just beat a murder. Right. Are you, were you shocked you know that saying? he was a part of it, I'm allegedly? shocked because everybody know that they in better situations. Like, yeah. Dirk, you come from going to jail for guns, being in prison. You know all this. You in a better situation. You better in Von. Von in the, better, the best situation he ever been in. And he... Come from under something that was dramatic. Mm. Vaughn would have got cracked. We would never see him again. 50 years. Right. We had never run into him ever again. You know what I'm saying? You already 25. You're going to die now. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to try to do to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like for everybody to come from under what they came from or know that they got so much to lose, it's like niggas can't never put, you can't put yourself in that. Like I tell my niggas all the time at the level I'm at right now, I'm trying not to get it ever. Like unless a nigga ever try to take my chain. Or like do some wild as hell to me like directly like it's never happening. Right. I'm never going like no sucker like that because I know <laughs> what I'm what I'm doing. It, it's it's not nothing that's every day every daily done. Like every it's not like oh my little cousin he doing this shit too. He gonna be able to take care of the family or something. No, bro. You got a million dollar enterprise, bro. Ain't but, nobody you in your circle rich. And also like back in. 2011 or whenever you guys were kind of coming up mm -hmm. there was less security and shit now i mean they're saying they got a video from like a security camera mm -hmm. of the dark situation which is kind of scary in itself that mm -hmm. like these days the surveillance is like you know it might feel like there's no cameras around and you might just be missing it because it might be like yeah. halfway down the street and they still yeah, gonna that's zoom what they in said. they said they got like they use cameras from around the whole thing like not even just from where it happened at but in other restaurants or stores that was around that might have caught that 
that little piece of what happened and over there. Think about like the Nipsey situation. The camera was so fucking far away. Mm -hmm. There's no way that if you were standing right where Nipsey was, that you would have been able to see that camera. Yeah. But that's the camera that they used, and yeah. that they're gonna bring in camera to prove yeah. that this guy did it and yeah. all that shit. So it's like you might not at all have any chance of being able to spot it, and there could still be a camera. That's why you gotta know not to put yourself in certain situations because, bro, like. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm fighting for my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people could say what they want about you, you know, but like, bro, if you move, it's called moving smart. Like, bro, you know, when I pull up to restaurants and shit, like, even if I'm deep as hell with the guys, bro, I'm going to send you in to get my food. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, unless it's a drive through and we on some fast food shit or I'm sitting down. Cause I, I do still sit down and go to restaurants, but I go them restaurants where I'm sitting down that ain't in no hot areas. I'm mm. I'm downtown sitting down at Roof Chris or something, you know, with a little bitch or something, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that that that's when I sit down. But like when I'm in the streets moving and maneuvering through the hood folk or through the area, you going in that bitch grab my food. I don't go in gas stations, folk grab me some woods, folk, because like it's one thing to not want to be in a certain situation, but you also got to eliminate yourself from certain situations. Like, niggas get shot, robbed. Or, like, it's a gas station. This is the most public place out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You trying to bell in that bitch and grab some gas. Oh, you ran into this nigga. Oh. Now, you didn't want to kill him, but you got your pipe on you. He got his pipe on him. He thinking you finna blow. You thinking it's up. Right. Y'all both up. Shoot. Somebody die. The other one in jail for killing him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you wanted to run in that bitch and you knew you really shouldn't even been in that bitch, folks. Yeah. Huh, folks? And all the niggas around me, they understand it. That's why they, they don't mind. Like, folks, he run, he don't let me do nothing. Right. Like, he act like I'm President Obama. Like, he won't <laughs> let me go into a store, a gas station, nothing. Like, he don't want me to do nothing. But do you feel like that in Chicago or do you feel like that out even somewhere like LA as well? I mean, like, I really do it. Like, in other states, I real lie be cool as hell. Like, yeah, I, right. because. I really never get to do it in my own city. So like when I come to like LA, I'm I'm thirsty to get out now because <laughs> yeah. I can't never get out at the crib. It's so unlikely you're gonna see somebody yeah, you got an you know issue with out here. And then even if if I do, niggas really don't really wanna act crazy out of town. Like, bro, look, mm. you probably out here enjoying yourself or something, and I'm out here enjoying myself. Get the fuck on. The people who have problems in LA are typically just people who are from LA. Yeah, who have yeah, problems with right, other people right. from LA. Right, For the yeah. most part, like you could be the most troublesome rapper who got beef with a hundred different people in Chicago or in Detroit. Detroit or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you come to LA, and it's like none of them people are gonna be out here, right. so you're probably good, right? Yeah, right. So you straight, you know what I'm saying? But mm. when I'm at the crib, I ain't doing all that goof ass shit, man. We don't want to go to parties like that or nothing. Like we gonna slap, man. Look, my bitch gonna come through. Y'all have some hoes come through. We gang banger like that. We gonna get how we gonna bully. We gonna have them peoples come through that we know official. But we ain't doing all that. Mm. I don't got no outsider niggas around me. Niggas that got a lot of homies. I don't know. I just eliminate a lot of shit because. You gonna be in that jam, or you gonna be dead, mm. and you gonna like it's gonna it's gonna affect everything, regardless if you die or go to jail. All that shit that you worked hard for, or the people that you <clears> got <throat> in them jams, like Rondo, is his situation is deprived. He depended on Dirk. You know what I'm saying? Like his right. whole appeal process is on depending on Dirk's money. Damn, that's crazy. Now so Dirk's it's like in his own now shit. you Dirk, yeah. you in your own jam now, and on top of that, you got niggas. Who with you? Like yo, you gotta pay lawyers to fight you and two of your homies' case. Yeah. This ain't even just your own case. Like you gotta pay lawyers to fight you in they, these niggas' cases. On top of you trying to make sure nine get back. Mm -hmm. And this shit, man, appeal cost, man, thousands. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you the only motherfucker that afford to make sure he get back. Right. You know what I'm saying so it's like, bro, you rap and then all the niggas in jail who needed a hundred this week. They did. Mm -hmm. They over with because you they can't even fix. They live to ask you for twenty right now. How nobody in, in your camp send you no send them no money because y'all they know where all your money need to go. That's crazy as fuck. So it's just like, bro, you gotta really think. You gotta really think. Like you gotta really want to not get involved in no type of shit like that. I hate to bring this up, but were you shocked to see that Reese clip come out online? Yeah, I mean, I was shocked, man. But I wasn't really shocked. Like ah, ooh, ooh. yeah. Like bro, I was just shocked because. I'm just one of them type of niggas like I'm not gonna be look bro it's nothing wrong with being a loner you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like moving by yourself or none of that shit like and niggas get jumped every day like right. you know what I'm saying niggas get jumped every day but if you moving how you moving you gotta be moving with, with your like ready to man like look bro it's hella niggas that didn't call me in public bro, but they ain't catch me right like, like they saw you but yeah, they, they saw me but 
What, some shit where you had it on you and they had it on them, but yeah. it, nothing and could happen? Yeah, smart. Like, bro, like I say, man, my name Tay 600. The streets know my antics, man. I'm a rapper, but <laughs> I'm the same nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, this bitch will go down. You better move accordingly. Get You've on. You've been in situations like that where it's just kind of like a standoff. Like, man, bro. Hey. I done been in situations with <laughs> niggas that were That's saying crazy. that I was snitching that I done caught coming out of the liquor store. And I'm belling out of the car and I got that bitch on me and they look at me and I'm looking at them like I should kill your bitch ass. The whole time I'm not because I'm smart. I'm not going to do it in front of this liquor store. But they be so scared because they know what I do. Mm. They <clears throat> want to come shaking hands, talking, kicking it. You know what I'm saying? It's like shit like that, bro. I'm just maneuvering smart. Like, bro, you, man, look, niggas didn't see me. They didn't saw me, but they ain't catch me right. because they know like. It, you could you could you could play with your own life and see. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> that's your life. Right. You know what I'm that's saying? Crazy. So that's how you got to maneuver, man. I, I'm not niggas not running up on me, catching me at all. Yeah. If you run up on me, you got to risk your life. It kind of felt like the Reese thing wasn't. They didn't get him that bad because they had to take a little like two second clip and stretch it out mm -hmm. and like leak the screenshots yeah. and like all this stuff. Like it's, it felt like they were trying to make a lot out of not that yeah, much. Them niggas was clout chasing, bro. I don't know what, you know the, what I'm saying. Them yeah. niggas was clout chasing like a motherfucker, bro. Like I said, niggas get jumped the other day, and a lot of motherfuckers won't even understand. Won't even understand why. Like I'm defending. Of Reese because Reese was one of the motherfuckers that tried to initially say I was snitching, Bro. but I'm really not defending him. Like I told a fan, I always been on the right side, and what's true is what's true, and what's right is what's right. So what's right is that y'all, it was five of y'all, y'all all grown ass men, each of y'all weigh over 160 pounds, and he little as hell. Y'all should have beat his eyes black mm. and broke his nose. You know what I'm saying? So all that little funny shit y'all doing, that shit ain't nothing. It's a lot of y'all. Y'all supposed to beat him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't even beat him, man. He getting up swinging, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all really let him. That's just like when niggas called Breezy at the mall. When mm -hmm. Black and, and the other nigga called Breezy in Vegas at the mall. And they were right. standing right there talking to him like, yeah, he was scared as hell. and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it was two of y'all and one of him. Y'all ain't beat him. Y'all ain't do nothing, but y'all caught him and y'all made him scared, but kind of, but y'all ain't really do shit else. Yeah. So y'all really don't really get no cool points. That's some crazy either. social media shit because that would not even, nobody would even know or nobody would think anything happened mm -hmm. if that clip wasn't out. And yeah, the clip made it look like, oh, Breezy, Breezy didn't just like overtly pop off on him, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he didn't fully get punked out no, either, right, you know? Right, right, right. And that's the thing with Reese. Like, he didn't fully, like, Overly bugged with them niggas, but he he was not. Y'all nearly didn't pull his car. Why like, didn't those dudes shoot him? You know, if, if if this is Chicago, we know what it's like. If they didn't shoot him, then the, what, what's up with chasing, them? You know, man, they cloud chasing. Yeah. Like, bro, this shit can't. This shit happened to him like two months ago. That shit old as hell. Really? Yes, it was that shit happened all the way in April. I remember him making a tweet about that shit, but I never knew what the fuck he was talking about. Really? And okay. then whole time these niggas pop up and. June come out some shit and we like, man, what the fuck? We think this shit just happened. This shit old as hell. And they just showing that shit. They get to making all type of rumors and shit. Come out all type of shit. And we just looking like, damn, they clout chasing like a month. They tagging y'all, say cheese. Mm. They tag, they trying to get some clout. They trying to get put on some type of blog, man. Right. So it's like, uh, it, that really made it less serious anyway. Like y'all woofing. Then two couple weeks later, one of the niggas that in the video, he get blew down. Really? Motherfucker oh, just yeah. popped him. Is that the one that Reese posted on his Instagram? Yeah, I think that's the nigga, man. That's crazy. By the Reese, right, Reese came out and let everybody know he had nothing to do with it. We just tweaking off dude, which is funny because, you know what I'm saying? You want to hit that folk? Oh, shit. Yeah. Up. Yeah, you know, it's just funny. You know, niggas be capping and shit, and then, you know, you get caught lacking and a motherfucker blow you down. But right. you catch a motherfucker's lacking and want to try to put your hands on them. They, motherfucker catching you lacking, trying to kill you. So it's funny, and that's how Chicago works, man. What make you laugh will make your ass cry. Is there Real a quick. lot of people that you feel like you're owed apologies for? Yeah, hell yeah. But, like, niggas ain't gonna never send them. Mm. Niggas ain't never gonna send them. Niggas just gonna stop talking about it or try to defend whatever the fuck they been saying. But niggas will never really be like, bro, you know what? I'm sorry because niggas ain't that real. And you know why they ain't that real? Because they done made such a big thing out of it. Right. That they, that now for them to come back will not only make them look fool, but they're going to be uncredible forever. Mm. Whatever y'all say in y'all raps, whatever y'all tell niggas y'all do or did or nothing, none of that shit is credible. We watched y'all merch it on y'all dead homies and sweaters happen and sweater happened for five years. And now we see that that shit is not even true. Right. So it's like niggas can't cop to that because even if I they apologize and then I accepted it, the world not going to accept it. Uh -huh. Y'all niggas took that boy through all that shit. 
And right. y'all lied on him And y'all knew All of you niggas knew y'all was lying Like I don't give no fuck what nobody say Everybody knew they was lying right. Everybody that said it Or came out and said anything They knew They was lying uh -huh. So it's like Y'all don't got no excuse for nothing Nothing y'all right. done can be excused How you feel about 6 9 snitching? That surprise you at all? No It don't Because hey, no, it don't surprise me, man. You can leave that. You don't got to worry about the ashes. You're a very nice guy, though, for, for, for doing that. <laughs> yeah, I hate, man. That's what, <laughs> Polite yeah, dude. Yeah, folks. But, folks, it don't surprise me. Real street niggas know this, man. All that capping dude was doing, like, when he came to my city, right? Yeah. And did that lame-ass shit he did in Obla, right? Obla. I knew he was a fucking lame. Mm -hmm. when, I, when he first got into it with Sosa, like, and they was getting into it, and Sosa got shot at in New York, and, they, and right after they got into it with him, and I was in New York for that, and they was all it like niggas. I used to, I was bugging up with niggas like all in fucking um, a court, a, a AQ projects and shit. I was bugging up with some of the Crips over there and shit, cause niggas was making it some Chicago versus New York shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm telling niggas like, bro, y'all know I've been in this bitch, bro. I've been in New York air better twenty times. Mm -hmm. Every time I go, I'm out there for three, four weeks. I'm in the trenches with it, mm -hmm. in hoods like in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, Queens. Harlem, Manhattan, I'm in all the bureaus, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my love for them was is unbearable. You know what I'm saying? But it was like they was quickly trying to make it some Chicago versus New York shit. And they like was everybody in New York was co-signing yeah, that shit? Yeah, they was co-signing <laughs> in the 6 9 shit. And I would use the, it tweaked me out because, bro, I literally watched all of these niggas like bash him. Like these same niggas, bro, they was not behind 6 9 a lot of A lot of niggas from New York knew 6 9 was a cornball for real. Right. Like, you know, that's just like a nigga get on from Chicago. And, and oh, oh, yeah, to the outside, we'll let him think he this guy. But the New Yorkers know he's a fucking, he was a project, mm. something that was made up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And bat him, bat him, bat him, same niggas he snitched on. You know what I'm saying? They made him. In terms of him having any kind of like street yeah, credibility, street being credibility able to talk shit like that. Being able to hang with street niggas, talk anything where motherfuckers actually believe in mm -hmm. what he's saying, it came from all them niggas. So right. it's like, I, me knowing that and being in the loop in New York, I knew that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when he came and did all that shit, it was like, ah, oh, man, this nigga is lame. He trolling. <laughs> like, all that shit was so so. I was pissed. I'm out there really bugging up with New York niggas. So it's like, now when he came and did the shit in O Block, he did the lamest shit. You know what I'm saying? He want to motherfucking be doing this shit. Like, he planned to do it. Like, bro, you went and made a video. And it was like, everything was adding up. Like, when he got off the plane, he got off the plane at like the red red eye hours. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and nobody knew he was even in Chicago, but the person that was at the airport is a somebody that was working at the airport that caught him getting off the plane by himself and was like recording him like, damn man, my nigga six nine here. This shit at like three in the morning, two thirty three, four in the morning, folks. Somebody catch him. Then I guess he got right off the plane and came to to O Block, made that video, and then. Went about his day when it posted him serving some motherfucking homeless people. He did that <laughs> yeah, hours right. before he actually posted it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because people went to the restaurants where he said he got the food from. We asked him, like, man, where ain't he been here? Hey, man, he came at like eight, seven this morning. Right. You know, so it's like people was real live chasing your ass around the city and you know it. Then on top of that, come to find out the person that's, that, he, that owns his management group or something like that is our mayor's brother. Right. So he got all type of police f riding around with this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. People catching him at certain things. He bellin' in the car. He riding with police. Like, he got lines of 12 going everywhere with him. Right. So it was never no catching him and doing nothing to him. Yeah. Never regardless. Same thing out here, man. He was marching up and down this street with a fucking squadron all around him. You know, it's like, there, there's probably all kinds of people in L.A. who would be happy to sit in jail for 20 years for popping him just because of how disrespected they felt. But there was no way. Even if you were ready to go to jail right then and there, you could not have got at him. Like, he would have yeah. a wall of people around him. Yeah, that's and that's... That shit wasn't gangster, man. Like mm -hmm. I, I wanna get that one gangster to me. You know what I'm saying? Like none of that shit was gangster. And then you know he kind of found, found out from whatever he knew that about the snitch situation. So he commented under my pitch when I exposed it. Like, oh, mm -hmm. didn't you suppose the snitch? <laughs> and the fans ate it up. They, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he commented on four six. So coming <laughs> to find out, this shit didn't happen the night before he posted it at three something in the morning. You hear birds chirping and you see the street is wet. It didn't rain the day he posted it. It right. rained that. Morning of when he was out there, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Kind of like at that midnight, and he was there for the after effect of the street being wet and all that. But 
It was just some trolling ass shit. And I, after the fact, after all this shit came out, I said, and every nigga from New York that was acting like they was rolling with this nigga over Sosa, these the type of niggas who you niggas are. Uh -huh. Because y'all co-signed him. And y'all knew he was a goofy, but y'all wanted to just co-sign him because he was a New York nigga. Right. So now, all you niggas are resentments of him. Y'all yeah. niggas, all y'all all are him. Yeah, it's like a lot of people kind of look guilty as hell for, yeah. for, for not saying something or like for, for sort of co-signing something. As not, not guilty. I don't feel like they're like directly being dragged in the public eye, but there's probably a lot of people who want to make sure they don't have to talk about it. Yeah, and they should just go crazy because he mimicked his whole career after Rondo. Yeah. And Rondo ended up supporting the hell out of this nigga, co-signing the fuck out of him once, bro. Like, after he came out and said that, Rondo want to get on it. Ah, oh, yeah, real niggas do real shit. And yeah, woo woo, it's big Rondo with 6 9 You know how we rocking a like. A bunch of people. Yeah. Look at Bobby Schmurter did the yeah. same thing. Went did a verse with him and all Bro, this shit. All this shit niggas was doing co signing clowns. And I remember when I first seen Rondo do it, I said, Rondo, now you know where we from. You know we don't do shit like this. That's crazy. We don't fuck dude is a goofy. You out here trying to keep your name let in jail. You co-signing this lame shit. He be saying gay shit. It's hell rainbow color. He ain't what he rap about. That ain't what we stand for. Mm. You co-signing this shit because he said he he mimicked you and he be... Man, look, bro. That ain't how we coming. Yeah. Then as soon as he get caught, him and Dirt co-sign a motherfucker and then he get into it with Sosa. Yeah. Now, now Rondo want to act like what he's saying ain't valid. Now he want to fake tweak with him. But this is the nigga you co-sign. This is why you don't jump behind shit you don't know about or right. understand. Mm. Don't put your name in that, bro. You don't know what this nigga going to have going on in the future. You cool with Rico Reckless? Don't fuck with him at all, man. <laughs> no? Not at all, man. You don't think it's funny? He's funny as hell, but I don't <laughs> fuck with him at all. He was another one of them niggas used to be calling this so coming for me about this snitch. You know, nigga, it's funny now because now that it, all the facts is out, niggas got to suck my dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, no no cap, no funny shit. Like, all that little funny shit you niggas was rapping about to get clicks and shit, that shit is straight lies and clown shit now. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he a funny nigga, though. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? He be fucking, he really a op, but he be fucking with some <laughs> of the guys from the hood. Right. I don't fuck with his ass, though, but he a funny nigga. He knows some niggas that I know. You mm. know what I'm saying? Did he? Did you ever see this uh, interview clip I did with him where he told the story about how he, he was taking a picture with a fan at a gas station, and mm -hmm. then he popped in the Uber, and mm -hmm. the fan fucking went to his car and got his gun and shot at the back of the Uber? <laughs> He like, said he that? shot like through the window in the back of the and it, like hit him in the in the back or the arm, like so he's basically he's taking a, a photo with a fan at a gas station, mm -hmm. and then the, the the kid says to him he says, "Damn, you lucky I don't got my move on me because 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 I would run down on you right now." And Rico was like, "Oh yeah, bitch ass, blah blah blah," and just like starts yelling on him and shit. And then he pops out and gets in the Uber, but the kid goes to his car and fucking just like shoots at the Uber while he's going. And then the fucking Uber driver, such a crazy story. The Uber driver locks the fucking doors so that Rico can't jump out and fucking just races to the hospital. And by the time he gets to the hospital, the cops are already there waiting for him. And he luckily didn't have his gun on him or anything because if he did, mm -hmm. he would have basically been like trapped being mm -hmm. driven to the cops. Like, right. that's crazy. You believe that? I mean, I don't know. That's a good point. <laughs> that shit sound wild as hell, folk. On BD, that it does sound wild as hell, yeah. Yeah, look. Look, man, I understand <laughs> when you hear certain shit, it might be hard to believe, man. I understand. I done had some wild shit happen to me, but he always saying wild shit, and I don't really know if I'm going to even entertain <laughs> that because. <laughs> you think that could be entertainment? <laughs> man, why he an entertainer for real, dude? Like, man, that nigga be saying some retarded shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he kind of got on from mm. entertainment. He, like, one of them niggas, like, his music never really played the real part in. What the fuck he was known but for. But that's he a good just, point. Like, I'm not saying that I think he's lying or not. But you could just, if you come up with a good story, you could get a million views on Vlad. No problem. Just bro, fucking tell that, tell some wild story. A lot of story. people live their life off of chasing clout and making shit up. Like, bro, people, you got to remember, bro, Kevin Hart is the most paid, act like, he the most paid little funny man in the world. And that shit be lies. They make that shit up, bro. Right. It's not no real. Like, why you think this man, He that's why he tells... All his jokes be about shit like that he supposedly done or what happens to him. Because right. he is a little short motherfucker and he think all that little short shit is funny. <laughs> people laugh at jokes and shit that happen to short people. That's, right. I mean, that, that, that's, that's what it. comedians do yeah. is that like probably something like a little bit funny happens to him, yeah. but then they end up just changing Overly everything, exaggerating, exaggerating the fuck you know out of it. Yeah. 
And it's just like that's what they do. So that's that's him. Mm. That's him. He a comedian. He probably <laughs> somebody. He probably took a fan p- picture with the fan, and then the nigga started banking on the window when he was pulling off. And now he want to make himself <laughs> having a gun, and then dude snatched it and blew him down. He, he had a thirty in there. Uh. All type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, type of shit. I wouldn't folks. even be mad if I knew that he made that story up because <laughs> I would like kind of respect it that he was just like trolling my ass and got like half a million views on the video clip yeah, and shit. Well, you know, that's that's funny. Uh, yeah, he, he he yeah. If that's what he did, I hey, respect it. All right, cool, man. That's how you bum him, gang. <laughs> no. I ain't gonna say that though. I ain't gonna. You don't worry about me. You wouldn't do that. Most, hell no. no. Bro. I'm telling real life shit. That's how my whole life been, man. Mm-hmm. Real scenarios, real street shit. You know what it is, man. Yeah. Um, oh, no. So what you got coming up? Anything uh, you been working on? Anything yeah, you need bro. to keep an eye out for? I'm on I'm on bullshit now. Nah, I'm finna drop an EP. I might extend it to a real album called The Get Back. Because now nah, I'm finna get back. Mm. I'm finna get. Because, you know, all this shit really, like, kind of deprived me. And it played a real toll on my career. You know what I'm saying? I missed millions. Missed a lot of industry cosigns. You know, missed a lot of things that would have been going on because... It's like everybody that knows me or know my body of work, they always question why I'm not there. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that knows this story, they know why. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand. You know, you got to understand this, Adam. A lot of people that's in positions in, in the music game are from the streets. Right. They're not co-signing no police shit. They won't even put their name behind it. Mm-hmm. And they'll get a lot of backlash or miss a lot of shit on their own. So it's like everything that didn't happen, I understood why. Mm. I ain't get mad at no nigga for not fucking with me while I was going on because it would be hard for me to do the same. You know what I'm saying? Being a street nigga. But it's like, for the niggas that did this to me, the reasons, y'all are the reasons why this shit happened. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get back. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get the dropping shit going crazy. I'm gonna make a song about the whole situation, how the lies came about, and everything. Like, I'm finna, I ain't gonna say I'm clout chasing, but I'm gonna use the clout that was given to me, and mm. I'm gonna capitalize off it. Because y'all been capitalizing off it, you know what I'm saying, this whole time. For sure. So it's like I'm finna drop some shit called the get back. The paperwork might be the artwork. There you go. <laughs> Do you think the world still wants drill music? Does drill music still mean anything? Man, drill music mean a lot. You know what I'm saying? I know niggas getting on off drill right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, that ain't really I can't even say that's all of that. I'm a, I am no more. Like that's what I used to be, but I actually, you know, I didn't broaden my whole goddamn it everything now. So I'm making shit like I like you know what I'm saying? Auto tune shit, club bangers, but it's like mm-hmm. that sh- that shit, that drill shit is in me forever. So it's like when I go back to that, that's like being at home. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's in my comfort zone. That's what I come from. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm gonna always be a great drill artist. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, like I really just don't even try to focus on that type of music really, unless like I get the beat that bring that out. Right. Because that shit is what I got. That's for sure. Right. And is it is it? Different for you at this point to rap about like straight violence and shit. Like, does it just feel more consequential to rap about crazy street shit because you've seen the the other side of it so much? Yeah, it's just like it's just like man, I be feeling like niggas supposed to rap about their circumstances. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was in them circumstances, bro, that was all I would want to talk about because it was like that was what it was. I don't want to rap about getting money and fancy cars and nice clothes. That's not what I got. And if you really look at my videos, that's what you can tell. Mm. Like everything got to be authentic with me. You know what I'm saying? And now that I'm now, I'm in LA with the vibes. I'm in big Airbnbs, <laughs> mansions, all that shit. Having all type of expensive ass cars. We smoking expensive ass weed, expensive ass drip. You know, that's how I'm coming now. That's what I like to do. Like, I got on Chicago drip right now, man. I don't know I got on the Chicago King Day. Fuck fame, man. You Fuck know? fame. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I got that. I'm on some Chirac shit right now. But it's like, this is like the shit that I rap about. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to really keep going back because, like I said, bro. I'm not trying to be approved by the streets. That was already my, that came in the game like that. Right. So I'm really, when I'm talking to street niggas, I'm trying to put their mind on something else like getting money or fucking bitches or just doing, living life now. The good side of life. Yeah, yeah, because bro, people try to like keep us condemned in that shit for so long, bro, that they think that's all we know. Mm. And that's why it be so disappointing when you got niggas like in Dirk and Possessors that get in these type of situations because people already think that's all we is, bro. Right. Even when we, like, even as like being black, you know what I'm saying? Like, people already, the other motherfuckers, they think we all we is, bro. And when we be trying to prove we ain't that, but we got our front runners 
proving just what they think, it's hard for us to get out of that box. You know right. what I'm saying? So if I'm gonna be a front runner for this shit, I gotta lead by example. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't keep like I go to jail, I done beat I just beat a gun case last year. They was trying to give me seven years for it. Damn, really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. And I, Cause I was fresh out parole for a gun. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And that was just gonna be my minimum, seven years. They probably would have gave me a sub up. Holy you shit. know what I'm saying? So it was like I go to jail for protecting myself, but I'm not going to jail for sending myself off or putting myself in those situations that would have cost me my whole career. Mm. Like, rather I had did seven years and not, it it would have been like, maybe, I'm only 22, maybe it would have been some hope for me. Yeah. But I ain't finna be out here, goddammit, 60, 70 years old trying to rap, man. You're still That's young. You're, <laughs> you're still young, and you got your fucking freedom. And, yeah. And you're in, in, I mean, shit, that's crazy, actually. It's a really, it's, it's a good time in your life, huh? Greatest. It's like, it's like, damn, it's like, my fans be telling me, like, damn, it's like, it's happening in full effect. You know what I mean, It's like, um, my fans be telling me and shit, like, damn, it's like everything is happening in full effect. Like, the niggas who was kind of sabotaging you, these niggas is putting themselves in situations where now they fucked up, they can't even entertain you no more, or, mm. you know, the, the, the shit that was holding you back for so many years is now in your favor, and, if, and the truth is coming out, and... It's like everything is like getting set up for you to win now. Mm. And it's like, damn, I don't remember the last time this shit was set up for me to win. It was like 2012 or something. 2013. Yeah. With like, yeah, 2013 when I first started rapping, I was coming from a hood that was hot. We was all on the scene. My name was hot on his own. So it's like everything was set up for me to win. Yeah. And it's like 2014 till just a week and a half ago. Everything been set up for me to fail. That's so I'm trying to get back in my element now. You know what I'm saying? And I just want everybody to know, like, my story going to be probably the biggest or most profitable story because, you know, you got niggas like Meek Mill and all them, and they, they telling the story so good, but it's like they telling the story that everybody telling about selling drugs, being incarcerated, uh, running into dirty cops, um, shooting guns, getting just street shit. But nobody out here going to be able to rap about being called a rat and condemned and putting in certain shit for so many years. Right. And being able to come from under that shit how I did, and I stood tall how I was through the whole thing. You got like, the story. Yeah, that that shit gonna be like shit. Niggas gonna have to make movies about and shit when they, with later on down the line. You know what I'm saying like it's like when they see us or something like you know what I'm saying like that's some type of shit like that. Like man, these right, niggas could have yeah. been killed. Like when, you were, when I was talking to you about the interrogation shit earlier, I was thinking about that. that yeah, because that that shit like that was really hard for me to watch. Bro, man, it was hard for me. It's like I remember. My homie, um, her name Brianna, her name uh, Hellweave Killer, right? And she was just like, she was really fucked up about the story. Her name Hellweave Killer on uh, Instagram. She do her. Okay. And she was just really fucked up behind the story. And I was just like, when I really watched it, I'm like, she was posting shit on the gram about how she thought about it and this shit. And I was telling her, like, bro, that shit real like that. Like, I'm telling you, I caught my first case when I was, my first pipe case was at 14. Uh -huh. My first case is period. Go back years before that. I'm running into the law. Petty shit, though, but I'm still in the law. Right. So it's like, I'm telling her how they, how they treat kids. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Like, your mama not going to be there as soon as they get catch you. They using all that little time to get in your brain. Like, this is shit that goes on, man. And it's like, people really don't even make it out a lot of times to tell their story. Like, them niggas that's in that shit, they did 20s and 30s years, for however many years they did. Man, them niggas went in jail when they was 15, 16. Right. Niggas in 40s and 50s now, man. Like, who the fuck want to get acquitted for some shit or some 25, 30, 40, 50 years later? Like, y'all can give me all these monies, give me 20 million and, and sue me and all. and. All that, but I miss my 20s. I miss my teens, my 20s, my 30s, and my 40s. Yeah. Come on, foe. I don't get that shit back, bro. I got to, bro, I would have spent $22 million way better than goddamn it when I was 25. <laughs> Y'all giving these motherfuckers $22 million, they 50. What they going to go back with this shit, man? They don't know what to do with 50 million. Fucking crazy. Yeah, bro. So it's like when I, when I really get in this shit, man, the story that I'm going to have to be told. It's going to be some epic ass shit because it's like niggas going to want to hit this because I'm going to be the first to tell it. I ain't yeah. going to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? You're good on camera, too. Like, aside from just the rapping shit, I could see you doing a lot of stuff just yeah. in terms of just narrating, talking about the shit you've been yeah, through on because camera. It's and like, shit. That's, that's just like a lot of shit that I just picked up. A lot of this shit really, like, as far as on the business side, like, you're not the first person to tell me that, like, or, mm. or to tell me that I just speak good, period. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't act like I'm just. 
some little hood nigga. You know what I'm saying? You, you could like, I could just imagine you like being able to do like the narration for like a documentary or a yeah, film or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know? man, because it's like, bro, I'm telling you, like, and and that's why I'm thankful for every situation. I don't, I really like, I found the good in this situation too. Yeah. Because I told a motherfucker like, bro. I love my hood to death. Like, it's to the point where niggas was doing fuck shit before this that I just would always accept and love them for because these was my niggas. They could do no wrong for, to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I really risked everything, like, everything for the streets. Nigga, I had my mamas and sisters and my daddy with this shit in the feds. Nigga, like, this was, like, I lived, breathed this shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like, if it had not been for this situation, I would have probably been trying to rap, bring these unloyal, disloyal, bogus ass, greedy, Fucked up niggas with me and had these niggas around so much shit that they don't even deserve. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, now nah, I'm just like, damn, shit, everything happens for a reason. Facts. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on the show. It was good to get to know you and get to do it on camera, man. Man, yeah, I appreciate you for having me, man. For real. Real yeah. one. Yeah. Tasty yeah. Sunder. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. R.I.P. Fredo. R.I.P. Fredo, man. R.I.P. L.A. R.I.P. All the gas, man. You already know how we come. Six L.A. game, man. Ah. Man.